So hi, this is a recorded lecture for topic uh, 4.2, which is on timber. Um, and we're going to be looking at natural and man-made timber. Um, and basically, timber is wood. So we're looking at a, an organic material that's composed of cellulose and lignin. And these are two proteins that, that um, give wood its structure. And, you know, wood can be natural wood like this. It can be chunks of, you know, interesting, can be made into interesting shapes. Or it can be manufactured wood or man-made wood. We'll talk about all of those in this lecture. Now, the two proteins that I talked about earlier, cellulose and lignin, they are actually very, they give wood its structure. So cellulose is very strong uh, when it comes to tension. So tension is a pulling force. So it's very difficult to pull a piece of wood apart by pulling on either ends of it. So that, you're looking at tension. And cellulose is very strong um, when we look at tension. Um, lignin is very strong for compression. In other words, it's very difficult to squish um, because of the lignin. And so this is, these are the two proteins that give wood its, its structure. Um, wood was, you know, it evolved, you know, millions and millions of years ago. We're talking about, uh, you know, hundreds of millions of years ago. And when it first evolved uh, back in the Carboniferous period, uh, which is well before the, you know, the time of the dinosaurs, it's like 300 million years ago, um, the wood, there was nothing that could eat it. So it would fall, it would build up in these giant swamps and huge layers. And that actually turned into coal beds, which is something that we use today. Um, coal is one of our main sources of energy on Earth. Um, if you want to have some more information about coal swamps, you can click on this uh, link right here, and it'll give you some more information. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so when we're talking natural wood, there are really two types of natural wood that we want to pay attention to. There's softwood and hardwood, and I want you to be careful. It's softwood right here and hardwood. It's not necessarily, you know, that softwoods are always soft and hardwoods are always hard. Um, it has more to do with the structure of the actual um, trees themselves, the structure of the wood. Um, some softwoods are harder than some, some hardwoods. For instance, this wood right here is called balsa, and balsa is actually quite a bit softer than any of the softwoods that you see here. You can take your fingernail and put a nice dent, or, or you could break a piece of uh, balsa super easily, whereas uh, these would be difficult to, to push your fingernail into. Okay. Now, there are hardwoods that are harder than softwoods, so you know that, that does hold. And in general, hardwoods are harder than softwoods. Okay, let's look at that structure that I was talking about. When you look at the structure of a softwood, you'll see that there are, um, are, are one type of cell in here. So if you kind of look at this, you'll see that this is you know, a, an electron micrograph of softwood, and you can see that um, there's just kind of one type of cells, and those are called um, tracheids, and these basically transport um, fluids, okay? And this is what you know, the structure of a softwood looks like. This is the structure of um, hardwood, and hardwood has two types of cells. It has um, vessels and fibers. You'll see that the vessels, these, these holes right here, are much bigger, and they also transport um, fluids, okay? And vessels and hardwoods have a larger di dynamic diameter than they do in softwoods. You'll also notice that these grow in layers like this, and this is what gives wood its rings. Okay, one of the ways that we measure uh, hardness is with something called a Janka hardness test, and what you're doing there is you're pushing a steel ball into a wood sample, and you're measuring how much force it is needed to push it halfway into the wood sample. And that's measured in kilonewtons. And so you can see in the softwoods that in general, they take fewer kilonewtons to push a ball halfway into them than they do with the hardwoods. You'll see that in general, the hardwoods are stronger. But Pacific U has a higher Jenka hardness test than most of the hardwoods that you see here. Okay, Whereas balsa wood has a very low hardness, right? It's, it's very easy. It doesn't take much force to push a ball into, um, into uh, balsa wood, okay? And there's balsa right there, okay? So, um, but remember, it has uh, the, the hardwood softwood thing has more to do with structure than it does with actual hardness. This is kind of an interesting video. It's, um, you know, it's a group of people who are working on trying to get wood to actually shape itself into some interesting shapes. So go ahead and have a, 
a quick look at this and uh, enjoy that video. All right, I want to talk about something called grain structure. Because um, wood grows in rings, as you can see in this photo right here, and when you cut that wood, what you end up is something, uh, you end up with something called grains, which is really the rings of the tree. And one of the things is that we want to pay attention to is are you, are you looking at something that is with the grain, so that's running along the grain structure, okay? Um, or is it against the grain, which is running perpendicular to the grain structure? Okay, so that is something called grain structure, and it's something that we use as a term with, with the grain and against the grain. Okay, so softwoods, they are typically conifers and gymnosperms. They reproduce with a cone. They have needles. They, have, they grow in cooler climates, and things like pine, spruce, fir, cedar, and, you know, this is a typical softwood tree. Um, hardwoods are typically deciduous. Um, or evergreen angiosperms. So what that means is evergreen means that they, they don't lose their leaves. Um, angiosperms are those that pr produce um, basically kind of like fruits uh, or they have a, something around their seeds. Uh, gymnosperm means naked sperm or naked seed. Sperm means seed. Gymno means um, naked. So this is naked seed. These, these have uh, some sort of covering on them. They're, they would either be like fruit or it could be like, uh, you, know, um, you know, if you think of uh, a, a seed that has some sort of coating over top of it, that's an angiosperm. Okay, and they're going to rep reproduce with flowers and seeds. They have leaves, and this could be things like oak, poplar, walnut, etc. So these are all di desert, different types of hardwoods that you might expect to see. All right, some things that, that affect the strength of wood are water content. So... Um, wood has a lot of water in it, okay? So there's a lot of water in wood, um, but uh, wood, when you season it, that means you dry it, you take a lot of that water out, and that will help to make the wood um, basically stronger. Uh, wet wood is easier to bend, so um, when it's dried, it's going to be stronger. All right, some things that affect wood. We have defects, things like knots. So when you have something like a, uh, a branch that's coming out of a tree, it's going to create a knot in your timber. Okay, and here's some knotty pine right here. You can also get things like warps. And so warps can happen with a cupping. So this is where it's sort of like a U-shape. You can have a bow where it's, it's uh, cupping. So this is cupping against the grain. This is cupping, you know, this is bending with the grain. Um, you can have it twist or you can have it crook like this. Okay, so those are some problems that affect... Uh, natural timber. All right. Um, also, the, the amount of time that a load is on a piece of wood will also affect its warping. So you can see that this this is actually a man-made timber, but um, you can see that that it's actually because of the load on it, it's bending over time. Okay, so that's something to, that affects wood. How long is the the load that it, you're putting on it? How how long has that been on it? Okay, um, some things that you can do to um, increase the strength of your wood is you can treat them. So you can treat them with a, a water-based chemical treatment, which will soak into the wood and it will um, basically stain it, uh, or, or an oil-based. Okay, and an oil-based will also soak into, a, uh, into the wood. All right, we have some man-made woods, and we'll look at those um, together. It's uh, plywood, glue lamb. Uh, medium density fiber board and particle board. So this is MDF or medium density fiber board. This is a uh, particle board. It's got chips of wood that's glued together. We have plywood and this is constructed of, of sheets of, of um, wood that is glued together uh, with their grains crossing. Uh, and then we have something called glue lamb where you're taking um, laminated uh, wood and gluing them together. Here. Okay. Um, the nice thing about man-made wood is that you get something called dimensional stability. And that is the degree to which a material maintains its original dimensions when subjected to changes in temperature and humidity. So uh, with the man-made wood, they tend to actually stay in the same shape, whereas uh, natural timbers can bend and cup and warp and twist and crook and bow and all those things. So um, that's a, an advantage of having man-made wood is the, the idea of dimensional stability. 
Um, one of the advantages also is uniformity of properties. That means that you know that the material is the same throughout. So this is MDF or medium density fiberboard and you know that everything all the way through this is going to be the same. Whereas where you have this wood right here, it's got knots and, and you know pieces missing and it's you know it's grain structure is different in certain parts and therefore it's going to have different um, dimensions or different properties as you work through the piece of wood. So uh, uniformity of properties is, is an important idea with man-made woods and that's an advantage. It can be also a disadvantage but it's, it's an advantage in a lot of cases. Okay, um, greater availability of product sizes. So, you know, when you, I showed this picture earlier, but when you saw a piece of wood, well, it's only, logs of wood are only so big. So you can only get pieces that are, are however, you know, big the, the log is. And it depends on how you actually saw that log. Whereas man-made wood, you can really make it to any size you want. So with man-made wood, you have a greater uh, range of product sizes. So disadvantage is, well, man-made wood kind of looks cheap. So some people with aesthetics, you know, it you would say, well, I actually don't like the look of man-made wood, so um, I would prefer to use uh, natural wood. So aesthetics is a big part of why people like natural wood as opposed to man-made wood. Uh, sometimes it does not react well with water, unless it's specially treated, like marine plywood. So marine plywood is plywood that you can actually put in, in an ocean environment, and it should be fine. Um, but a lot of times it just does not um, react well with water. So it'll delaminate, which means that the, the plies will come apart. Or if it's something like particle board or MDF, the, the, it'll, the structure of itself will swell and, and be destroyed. And also, it doesn't stain well sometimes. Like plywood would stain well, but like MDF doesn't stain well. Okay, So those are some uh, disadvantages of man-made wood as opposed to natural wood. All right, thanks for watching.